When it comes to healthcare technology, the whole world looks for ways to make healthcare more convenient and fast, so that everyone around the world can reap the benefits. We all know blood tests are one of the most important things when it comes to knowing the internal state of anyone's body. So one entrepreneur named Elizabeth Holmes came up with a blood testing procedure that would just revolutionize the whole healthcare system, and this revolutionizing tech of her grabbed the attention of the whole world and she found some financial help to develop it. But there was some huge dark part related to this whole thing. In this video, we'll be exploring the dark story of Elizabeth Holmes, which relates to a $9 billion scam. A bit of early age. Elizabeth Holmes being born in Washington, D.C., her father worked for government agencies, often overseeing relief work, and she was brought up wanting to change the world for the better. She developed her work ethic from a young age, and she was a serious student who wanted to be a billionaire with her efforts. She also learned Mandarin by starting a business selling a type of software that translates computer code. Inspired by her great-great-grandfather who was a surgeon, she wanted to go into medicine. But as she found her fear of needles, she changed her goal. Short-lived career at Stanford Holmes applied and was accepted to Stanford University in 2001, where she studied chemical engineering. Elizabeth Holmes arrived at Stanford University in 2002 filled with ideas. Early on, she claimed she started thinking bigger about founding her own business. There, she discussed her revolutionary idea with a medical professor. Holmes wanted to build a patch that would scan the wear for infections and release antibiotics, but the professor tried to explain to her that there are some major flaws in her theory, but Holmes was not deterred. Promising start. Then, after doing a summer stint at the Genome Institute of Singapore, where she was involved in work to develop systems to detect SARS, Holmes was inspired to develop her own systems and technology for detecting disease. Holmes turned to one of her teachers with her idea who found something promising in her idea. According to the professor, I realized that I could have just as well been looking into the eyes of Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Okay, she was really serious about her idea, but what went wrong? We'll get to that part in a little bit. With Robertson's support, Holmes started her company, which she first called Real Time Cures and later renamed Theranos. Robertson became her mentor, at first serving as a voluntary director of the company before leaving academia to become a full-time employee in 2013. In September of 2003, Holmes filed a patent application for a medical device to analyze monitoring and drug delivery. It would be the first of many. So Holmes sought out to revolutionize the healthcare industry by developing a method of comprehensive testing of blood. The next year, age 19, after dropping out of Stanford, she started to work for Theranos full-time. Edison, the big idea. After some research on the big idea of Holmes, it was finally put to bed, but then she came up with another outlandish idea. Her idea was to replace the uncomfortable needlework normally used for blood testing with a minimally invasive process. Theranos would make this aspect of healthcare quick, painless, and inexpensive. With the company Theranos, Elizabeth was thinking of developing a machine that could test for a variety of diseases through only a few drops of blood from a person's finger. It would democratize the testing process, allowing anyone to get a test done at a pharmacy and have it analyzed in hours. With the help of this imagery machine, Holmes thought of making people more likely to seek care when needed and potentially cut down on mortality rates. Holmes often told the story of her beloved uncle dying from cancer, rapping with an inspiring message about saving the ones we love. Called Edison after the inventor, I promised to revolutionize blood testing. Theranos planned to charge less than half the rates charged by Medicare and Medicaid in the U.S., potentially saving the U.S. government $200 billion over the next decade. Catching the Eyes of Investors Now, she had a make-believe technology idea but needed the cash to start developing it. In addition to Holmes' passion for the company and her Change the World ideas, one of Holmes' greatest strengths, as described by former employees, board members, former teachers, etc., is her steely-eyed focus and her uniquely low speaking voice. By using those in order to raise initial funding, Holmes leveraged several family connections. The first two investors in Theranos were Tim Draper, the father of her childhood friend and former neighbor, and Victor Palmineri, one of her father's longtime friends. By the end of 2004, Holmes had raised nearly $6 million. In addition to those heavy hitters, at the height of the Silicon Valley popularity, Theranos had raised an estimated $724 million in funding from who's who's of investors like Oracle's Larry Ellison and a rumored $100 million from Rupert Murdoch. The political elite soon followed, with formal Secretaries of State George Shultz and Henry Kissinger, and former Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis joining Theranos' esteemed board. 
But from here, the dark side of Holmes started to show up, actually. She didn't accept any kind of medical experts into her board of members. Why is that a big deal, you ask? As none of the investors had a strong medical knowledge, so none of them, with the exception of possibly Senator William Frist, had any concept of what they were looking at. She was cunning for sure. Hatching complete. Her self-belief must have been catching. As of November 2013, Theranos announced a partnership with Walgreens, the second largest pharmacy chain in the US. They installed Theranos blood testing booths in about 40 of its stores. And the funny fact is that Walgreens signed with Theranos before it had any results. The move marked a big step in Theranos' mission to be within reach of every single American. By 2014, the company had raised more than $400 million and was valued at about $9 billion. Elizabeth Holmes was worth $4.5 billion, according to Forbes magazine, making her the youngest self-made female billionaire. And at the same time, she was getting much popularity for her Steve Jobs-esque attire. Just like Steve Jobs, she was wearing only black turtleneck sweaters in public. Here's a shocking fact. All funding was given on the condition that Theranos did not have to reveal how the technology worked, with Holmes grabbing on more than 50% of the company's stock. On top of that, from the start, however, Holmes was unwaveringly secretive about how the Edison worked. She gave little away, using vague explanations of the technology. Did that seem a bit suspicious to anyone? Shining Lights on Lies Not everyone was a believer, of course. John Carreyou, twice Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist of the Wall Street Journal, first broke the story of Elizabeth Holmes in 2015. He worked patiently to find out what was really going on at Theranos. Talking to employees who started to tell a very different story from that dazzling public image. Some were saying that the Edison results were inaccurate. Others revealed that the vast majority of tests were not done in Theranos labs at all, but in conventional machines bought from mainstream suppliers. On top of that, many employees knew Holmes' machine couldn't be built. As one says, you can't just bend your way around the laws of physics. You can't just have a great marketing campaign and get around those things. Exposing the Scam After John's story was published, the U.S. financial regulator, the Securities and Exchange Commission, opened an investigation. This one article led to the whole Therano scam of Holmes to fall down. The reaction from Theranos was astonishing. At first, Holmes denied the claims made against her and the company. Theranos even threatened to sue John himself, who became a perceived enemy to the company. Nonetheless, in 2018, Holmes stepped down as CEO and alongside former company president Ramesh Balali was charged with criminal fraud, having allegedly misled investors and deliberately made false claims about the efficiency of the company's blood testing technology. Three months later, the company officially shut down following an investigation by the FBI, leaving thousands of former employees, many of whom John found to be talented people with integrity, unaware of the company's fraudulent activity, uncertain about their future. So smart and so dumb. How can so many smart people have been duped for so long? From the outset, she signed impressive investors despite having nothing to show them. The answer could be that she had really, really good convincing power. That's why she was able to pull a $9 billion scam by herself, even with all those smart people around her. Now with new management and structure, Therano said it looks forward to advancing its technology. But with that reputation, that will be hard for Thanos to live down, with or without Elizabeth Holmes. Here ends our coverage of the $9 billion scam of Elizabeth Holmes. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.